ne kumbe fe ka dongili lela ni nuna mogo minga shila sangi ye ya fanema ne kumbe fe ka barole ke ni nuna mogo minga shila sangi ye ya fanema okay this uh, this verse i borrow it from uh, our singer alpha blonde he said he came on the stage to sing if he offends anyone to please forgive him that's what i said i came here to chat baro and and dongili i switch dongili to baro meaning i switch the singing to chatting so as i'm here to chat to talk to you guys if i through this if i offend anyone please forgive me that was not my attention i know somebody some people gonna somebody or some people will be offended anyway it's not my attention my attention is to explain and tell you the detail or explain what went on uh, after my west african trip that vlog was not easy at all it was very 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 difficult to do vlogs in west africa first of all when i decided to go to west africa and you know, i've been there many many times before doing a vlog, doing a photography uh, of visiting family members uh, many times so that i thought that was my territory but this time when i decided to go to west africa i literally in my plan i was gonna stay there from six to seven months so i stuck up i brought all the gears that i think i'm gonna need about four camera bodies three tripods reflectors a external mic you know how do you call this one now a, a ex external recorders that's all somebody might know that with external recorders all these are re recorders i brought a bunch of those guys external drive about seven terabytes seven hard drive external terabytes so and i brought like a even a, a camping gear reflectors camera lenses about about, about, about I, brought, I brought about 10 different lenses because i used to be a photographer I have a, a photo a background and I did a lot of landscape and portrait photography so back in the day in West Africa, same place, same uh, West Africa too. So, but this time I was going through with, to do the video. But when I got to Abidjan, and uh, normally I always travel with a small bag, 20 kilos, with any camera can fit with that bag, I will travel with it. I don't do any check check uh, check in luggage I just carry on to the plane but this time I had to check in extra luggage about two suitcases even camping gears camping tent I had that in case I go to some villages I need to stay overnight so when I got to Abidjan Lord have mercy within 10 days I realized most of those gears will never see African daylights ever it was so difficult people were so really reluctant resistant against the video camera i mean literally to film around it was so difficult that's why my advice if any video makers or photographer if you want to go to west africa you need a guide somebody can take you around because he will take you to familiar places people who knows him so you won't have any trouble but for me i thought i didn't need that because this is west africa that's where i'm from and i've visited those places 10 20 times before so i thought well i know very well what's going on but i was completely wrong when i got to abidjan literally it was every day i went out to try to film it was very 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 difficult so i end up you know using some of my family members like my niece you saw with me in ajami marshe and his friend and her friends in in the those guys were my guide it made things easier a little bit after about 10 attempts because i went out every day to try to film it was almost impossible so but the thing is really really was very hard for me first of all one day i got chased on the freeway in abidjan going to the airport to drop one of my niece off who was going to mali this guy literally followed me and cut me off and pushed me to the police saying i've been filming him all the way from from ajami the police said was why do you feel i said no i'm filming the freeway i'm doing my he just came to my frame anyway i talked my way out of the police look at it he said oh whoa you're right he the one cut you off and came and said well why are you filming i said no, i'm a videographer i'm a youtuber and by the way the authority never bothered me anyway in west africa anyway in uh, in abidjan by the way the authority never bothered me because i was always on public places then another time i was in plateau there's a neighborhood called uh, riviera village i wanted to film all oh, my day those people they said oh they are the chief of the village i should not be filming there without their permit 
permission. I said, but it does not say anywhere in the neighborhood that I need a permit to film here. I've been filming other in other places in Abidjan. This is part of Abidjan. What can I film here? That place is right next to Hotel Ivoire, right two blocks from Hotel Ivoire. Somebody is talking to me. I don't know what's up. You know, uh, somebody is talking to me, and I want to know what's up. Eh? C'est quoi C'est quoi Chez Ferry, ça veut dire Ça veut dire Non, je suis dans la rue, c'est pour l'État. Je ne suis pas allé chez vous, je suis dans la rue. Vous êtes là, vous êtes là. Ici là, il y a un village, il y a un village, il y a un village. On va pouvoir parler d'aller à la chefferie. Si vous ne pouvez pas éteindre, vous pouvez faire Attends, 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 attends. Literally, they grew me in that village bench, in that small, in that neighborhood bench. Five of them called the chief of the bill uh, of the neighborhood, grilled me for 45 minutes. Maybe they wanted me to bribe them. I didn't care. I said no. I don't. I don't. I didn't know if they had a sign. I would go to the office. But all this small harassment, and the really the one really 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 bothers me. I want to Banco for those people who knows Abidjan is a big forest place called Banco where you can go hiking and run in the in the, in the bush literally it's called here hiking trail people just go and hike so i wanted to show my audience when you go to ivory coast we have a hiking place too you can go and hike there i did my intro in front of the the, the park when i came in to get in to take my ticket the ticket cost about maybe two or three dollars the guy said, no, I, I, he can't let me in. I said, why? He said, because of my video vlog, uh, my, my, my camera. I said, but I'm all, he said, no, no, you can't, you need a permit for a ministry of tourism. I said, are you kidding me? This is a damn forest. There's nothing there but hacking. He said, nope. Because he saw, if he saw the shot, my group, this said, you know, with my vlogging said, he said, no, 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 no. I might be a reporter. I need a, I said, I'm not a reporter. I'm just a YouTuber. And I explained to him everything, gave him my YouTube channel. He didn't bother. He said, nope, you can, you cannot come in. All right, guys, another roadblock. It did not work out because this country is just paperwork oriented. I came here to get in the park to just do a goddamn simple vlog. They're asking me to go to Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Tourism, Ministry of... Get another goddamn paper for the just simple filming inside the park. I, I just, I don't believe it. So, you know, we've advised with some friends or family members say, why don't you go and try to get that permit? Everybody's talking to you. People will be sitting in the middle of the street because by the way i'm not going to anybody's house to try to film no but i'm always on the main street places public places try to do my video explain what's going around me anybody who sees me now they don't want me to film because they can see me vlogging i, I always tell them i'm not in your property i'm in the middle of the street they say even that i need a permit to be filming around i said but who do i get a permit from there's a thousand of people around here you know, so they don't understand. They don't know the difference between the public and the private property. And even on, in that too, they will be sitting, especially around the market. Those women will be sitting, smart, they stall in the middle of the street, trying to sell what have you, banana, peanut. Now they don't want me to film because they're there. I say, honey, ma mom, you are in a government place. You are on a public property. You, that's not your place. You're not supposed to be here. That's why you are fighting with security guard all the time to get out of the road. I have a right to film here. You, know, you don't have a right to sit here. They don't understand that. The thing is, the minute you pull out a video camera, you need a permit. I said, it, it doesn't work that way. And also, a lot of people say, oh, video, are you making a video, you need a permit. No, no, no. If you are a vlogger, the rule says, as long as you can carry your camera in one hand, you don't have a crew. The crew meaning, it is, if it's less than five or nine people to be exact in France, because we have a French rule. If your crew is less than nine people, if it's not after midnight, you don't need a permit to vlog anywhere. Because I'm carrying my camera in one hand, that's a you vlogging, and I'm only by myself. I don't even have a two people, and then I'm not obstructing anyone. So that's when I don't need a vlog. That's that's the condition of filming on the street. A lot of my uh, 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 some of my uh, subscribe or uh, comment say, oh yeah yeah, you have you need a people permission before you vlog. Yes, if I go into your house, but I'm not going to your house. I'm in a public property, governmental property. The government tell me I don't need a permit to vlog when I'm in the street because I'm not obstructing anybody. I'm in a government property. I'm carrying my video in one hand and uh, I don't have a crew. So that's me. You don't need a permit. That's why a lot of people don't understand. I do my research before I, I do my research before I go to any country. So since and, uh, uh, 
that Banco one, uh, the forest one, really, really bothers me. So the next day, I went to the Ministry of Tourism to try to get a permit to give me something to write about, to literally to just give me something, you know, that I, I can I can use if somebody asks me what's the permit. I will show them that documentation. Maybe they won't even be able to read it. Even if they read it, they won't understand what is in it. Just some kind of uh, paperwork. She told me, well, why are you here? I said, I explain her exactly what I need. She said, but in Africa, you don't need that. You don't need, uh, as long as you're in a public street, you can do your vlogging anywhere you want. As long as, but if you, because that office is across the street from the presidential palace. She said, unless you want to go to that house over there, try to vlog, but then you're going to need a lot of time. I said, no. I told her nobody's in that house really knows what I'm talking about. I'm talking about planting banana in a marketplace. They don't have a clue. She laughed. She said, that's true. She said, no. She told me, she said, yeah, this is Abidjan. You get out, do your vlog. If somebody bother you, bother them. If they shout, you shout. If they push you, push them back. You don't need no permit. Good luck. This is Abidjan. I said, wow. So when I went out, that's when I convinced my niece to do, to be my guinea pig in Ajami Marche. You see how that turned out to be? And his her friend in a bit in the marsh too in that marketplace that turned out to be very well. So my advice is, if you bring bring your video camera in West Africa, please use a guide. It will make your life easier. But for me personally, I don't like guides because guide is like a making a bandage in a wound, and you don't see the real thing because uh, those guides will take you to familiar places, people who know people who he knows or she knows. So then everything will become much more beautiful and people ask, I don't like that. I like to go to places raw, natural, you know, like I did in Saudi Arabia, yeah. like I did yeah, in, uh, in Palestine. No much. guide, yeah. nobody. Yeah. Those are foreign land and, and, and I can vlog anywhere there, no bothering. My hometown, I need a guide, could you imagine that? So I went to my hometown, I didn't even bother doing anything there because I know the mentality there. You know, I did only small video here and there with the dancing, with the party and the street. And then I, I went to the bus station, five or three days later, to get on the bus to go to Mali. Lord have mercy, that was the worst thing ever happened to me in my entire vlogging. I came in the morning, as I would normally do, do my intro in front of the bus station, trying to get on the bus to go to Mali. I do my, I did my intro and uh, only 40, 30 seconds, then the sky opened up, it started raining. So I run into this small shack in front of the bus, bus stop, in front of the bus station, in front of the compound, trying to put my camera in my bag. These, the, over there, there was about 18 to 22 kids, young boys between 18 and 25. One of them asked me, so, oh, uh, brother, what are you doing with this uh, video? I looked at him, I didn't say anything because I know what was leading to it, because I had a lot of problems in Abidjan. People are saying, what are you doing with this video? You probably go film, and film us and take our head off, put somebody else's head on, who is making a, a, a pawn or robbing a bank, the police will be looking for them. I say, are you kidding me? And I will be posting it on WhatsApp or Facebook, because they don't talk about YouTube that much, because most of them are not on YouTube. They're always on WhatsApp or Facebook. Because the data roaming for those is cheaper for them. I said, really, these guys spent about 20 minutes explaining to me how people can make film on the cell phone and upload it on WhatsApp or YouTube and move, remove somebody's head and put somebody else's heads on, making all this crappy stuff and the police, they will be wanted by police. I said, whoa, that's interesting. I never heard of that before. Anyway, I got away from him. When this kid asking me, what are you doing with this video? Now, all these things in Abidjan came back to me. I didn't say anything. He kept repeating this. I didn't, he got mad. Why I'm not answering his question? Why I'm not answering his question? As a young man, the reason I'm, ask, I'm not answering your question because my video making nothing to do with you. I don't need to. I don't have to answer it because I'm not filming you. If I was filming you, yes, I will ask you. To, but I'm not. I'm on the street over there. You are sitting here. Why do you have to tell you anything? He said no because as long as they see me and I'm in front of their company, that's a bus bus company. I, they need, I need their permit, permission. I said, no, I'm not inside your compound. I'm in the street. Your gate is over there. I'm in here. Why do I need to tell you anything? What he said is his right to ask me, show him my permission to film me. I said, no, I don't have to show you anything. You have a right in your compound. I have a right in the public property. This is for the government. That they got mad. Now they jump over me, grab my camera, literally smack my, grab my, my, get my head in lock. They want to delete my film. So they don't know how to use this camera. They broke my microphone. 
you know, literally they smash my camera on the floor. Somebody was screaming, if you don't let the camera go, they're gonna they're gonna break your neck. Because I, I wanna protect my 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 film, my camera. You know, oh my god, literally all this memory was flooding back to me. And in the US when I was doing a film school and photo uh, photojournalism in a film school, one time my our my teacher sent us out, you know, to do different projects. I went to Santa Monica. I did my film. One, I was, I had my tripod, and I was filming this lady, police woman, literally trafficking, directing the traffic. You know, uh, this guy. I'm doing this video very quick and very fast, so it doesn't have to be too long. So this guy, literally, uh, came from nowhere. He said, oh, "Oh, why are you filming me?" I said, "No, I'm not filming you." She said, "What well, he wanna say?" And I show him the footage. You know, my teacher said, what? You let him touch your camera? I said, yes, sir, because he wanted to see, I wanted to make sure he was not, he said, oh, no, 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 stop, stop. He said, he took to also, that's another example. You never, ever let anybody touch your camera. You are the photographer. You are the filmmaker. You are the video. Nobody, this is your property. Nobody is allowed to touch your camera. You don't, even the police, you don't show them anything. If they took to the, to the court, to the, to, the, to the police station, they know better. So they're gonna deal with the court in that it's your property. You, as long as you're in a public property, you can film whoever, wherever is in that place. So then let us deal with the rest. So that came back to my mind because I, they had my head in a lock and literally my head, of the, they were shouting. It's a COVID time too, everybody's screaming. Nobody had a mask. I had a mask, it was almost here. People are screaming, yelling, ah, lady, break his neck, break the camera, smudge, smudge the camera, break his microphone. So then, and one guy said, if you don't let it go, they're gonna keep, they're gonna break your neck. So I let the camera go. I said, okay, 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 let me show you. I showed it to them and they said to delete. I said, okay, I said, okay, I'm gonna delete it. I delete it, they will not show. They hold my camera, they call somebody else on the cell phone to come and reformat because that young kid knows more about the camera trying to reformat my film, my, my video. So that's another lesson. Luckily, luckily, that's another thanks to the film school and thanks to photography. I mean, thanks to the photo journalism. They tell you anything, anytime you go out to do filming, anytime you go out to do photo, when you come home, upload your, transfer your footage into external drive. On the sky, somewhere, get it out of your camera because something wrong with some man. If your camera malfunction or something goes wrong with your, with your, with your camera or your SIM card, you're gonna lose entire work of the day. I had that habit since I have that habit since I was student. Any day I went out, I film, I come home, I uploaded my 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 footage to external drive. Even even I go out for 10 minutes, as long as I film, even for 45 seconds, I come home. I will transfer those video to external drive, which I did the night before. So what those people reformat my 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 video, it was only 45 seconds of an intro. That's all I lost. At the same time, the copy was on different format, with which they didn't even know because I had small, big, medium camera. I had already the footage in in different format. Like I have because I already I was filming my small camera earlier on. I was filming on this on film on this. So whatever they did it was only the intro they filmed. So I, then I got into the bus heading toward Mali. I was so upset. I was so down and depressed. Literally, I got to Bama, to Sikasso, That's the main city in in Ivory in in Mali. I got there because I have a friend there. I stay with them. You know, I've known those friends since I was a teenager. So I because we met in the Middle East at college down there. So they they're doing some great work in Sikasso, by the way. I stay with them, and after three days, I. I wanted to get out and do some more filming. He told me, he said, oh, it's not a good idea here in, in, in Mali because people are so crazy here when you're trying to do video. I said, whoa, that's your host is telling you to be careful. I said, wow, okay. So within, I only pan my video, my camera around here and there for small here and there, no major things. But then a friend of mine texts me from Fiji. He said, oh, uh, Fiji had opened up uh, if you want to come over. I said, Good time because I know I've been to Fiji 10 times before back to 18 20 years ago so I know Fiji very well I said oh Fiji are extremely nice excellent people I said you know what I'm gonna go to refuel I just got on the plane went to Fiji from Mali and there's no direct flight uh, I had a lot of connection France and Los Angeles into Fiji I stayed there for a whole month by the way you know and you know if you have not seen my Fiji if you are new here 
go and check out my Fiji video. Excellent video. People are extremely nice, camera friendly, smiley all the time. Completely opposite from the West African video. Anyway, and if you're new here, please go and check that video. If you are, if you are one of my subscribers, support that. I think every single of my subscriber who's been supportive all this time, please stay tuned all the time. I love you, and please keep bringing those or uh, comment. I love them. Uh, any good comment will motivate me to make more videos. Thank you very much for being a supporter or a supportive for such a long time. Thank you very much. It's a marathon for me. It's not a sprint. So anyway. And from Fiji, I came back again to Mali. I went, because since I do my videos in series, one, two, three, so I like a series, I like sequence. I flew from Fiji to Mali again. I went to back to Sikasso in the main city in Africa's border. Get on the bus again from Sikasso. I went to Kuchala, Kuchala to Sikasso, from Sikasso now to Bamako. But in between, uh, when I got to Kuchala this time around, uh, I started to do intro over there lord have mercy the minute i pull up my video i try to do entry for a few seconds boom the military i mean the military came and took me away lord put through me in jail for about 45 minutes before the boss came because uh, uh, somebody in the village told me oh somebody's doing a video here so they came and took me away and put me in a video for 45 minutes. So when the boss came, he looked at who is, who is the man, who is the video guy, who is doing the video? He said, that's him. So he came with a big gun, literally big gun, big guy too. It's not like a six, seven or something like that, bigger the big gun. He said, oh, oh uh, you're the one making it. Start to speak to me in French. I switch it in Jula because we speak the same language. They call it Bamara, we call it Jula, same. So to make sure to let him, I'm a local, I'm not any kind of a reporter, I'm not from a sneaking doing anything. He asked me, oh, uh, who was doing the video? I said, me. He said, but why are you doing the video here? I said, no, I'm, I'm a vlogger. I'm a YouTuber. I'm going to Bamako. So I've been blogging from Ivory Coast all the way to, to, to Mali. He said, okay, can I see what you have? And I showed it to him. He looked at it. He said, that's all you got? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do you work for? I said, no, no, no. I work for myself. I have a YouTube channel. If you want, I'll give you the name. He looked at it. He said, let, get out of here. Let, let him go. So then <laughs> I'll go back to the bus. Everybody's pissed off. Oh my god, the people in the bus. You are troublemaker. Why are you why are you doing those video man? You're gonna get all in trouble. You're gonna get all of us killed here. Now. I didn't say it because they were so pissed. I didn't even open my mouth. I sat in the bus, cruise to, to Segu. When I got to Segu, Segu, everybody knows Segu is a very traditional city. That's where the match club, the Bogolan started. So I stayed there for one one week with my friend. I didn't bother filming. I did only a few filming here because I now my brain I was panicking. I was so what is so scared of even pulling my camera out because what happened in Boake in Ivory Coast. So you went to Bamako. Now worry about in Bamako again. I got in some trouble in Bamako because the ice my first week in Bamako I tried to film it was everybody shouting everywhere. I couldn't do anything. I convinced some of my family members in Bamako my, they said hell no as I did in Abidjan I wanted to replicate the same thing in Mali no way nobody will would, would, nobody will take that chance Certain, not in Mali here everybody gonna get beaten up if you're not careful you're gonna end up in the hospital and uh, I said well you know then I tried to hire a motorbike or some of my cousin when they dropped me over trying to pan in the city that's what you see filming in the street behind a motorbike it's a great fugit until I went to the art market so I convinced this young kid young boy over there who is guiding me around in the market in the in the art form it turned out to be fine so i always try to find my way around it but every day you are looking over your shoulder when you have your video vlogging somebody gonna walk you because they'll be shouting behind you i heard it, i understand it because everybody's speaking in bambara i understand it so then you are worried you are panicking so after a uh, two three weeks in bamako i head out to kai which is another main city toward uh, senegal because my main is to go to senegal I think Senegal would be paradise for me because Senegal is a much open-minded, very, very friendly people. I've been to Senegal hundred times before. Many, many, many I have family there as in Mali too. So I didn't go to Burkina because the timing, I didn't have enough time to go to Burkina. So I bypassed Burkina to go to Mali and now I'm heading to Dakar. So I went to Kai. I stayed up in Kai for three days. And from Kai, I got in the bus and I just pan video around Kai. And from Kai, I went to Senegal. 
you know, Kai, but then there was a trouble between Mali and Senegal at, the, at that time. I got stuck in Mali for almost, uh, got stuck in Kai for three days because I couldn't through because there's a, there's a, a big trouble between the truck drivers. So the border was closed. So then after they reopened the border, I went through, went to, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, Dakar now. Same repetition. Anywhere you go, people are shouting again. Some Senegal didn't want to hear that. They, oh, they're telling me everybody is, is vlogging in Senegal. That's a lie. If they vlog, they're vlogging a cell phone. They take their cell phone like that, you know, and, and pan around uh, or they pretend like this. And of course, you, you're going to get away with a lot of things. I don't vlog with this. I, I do serious camera. I have a YouTube setting video. So people are thinking out why are you vlogging, why are you doing this, why are you doing that. So, and uh, they, also in Senegal, in a lot of places in Dakar Plateau, you see my video in Senegal is very short and I didn't get to even interact with people because of uh, all this screaming, you know. But at the same time, if that was a white person who had the video camera from my eye because of autism, they would be vlogging everywhere in North Africa, no problem. But why they harassing their own people, I don't understand. That's not, that's not specific to Senegal, it's to Mali, to Ivory Coast, to everywhere in West Africa. I think why, and because of those white people, when they're vlogging, people want to be friendly to them. They, they give them their phone number, they take them to their houses, they will be filming everywhere in the hope that they can have that kind of relationship. That person might be able to sponsor them to go to America or, or go to Europe. That's the bottom line. But for me, they see me as a local person who is dressing like them. I literally dress down heavily to be able to blend and make sure I speak the language, just local language, to make sure, let them know I'm not a foreigner here. I'm a local. And that backfired. Somebody told, told me, why don't you tell them you are from America? Or you, so then they can, I said, dude, if we are in the West, in the diaspora, we always are, we are proud of being from Africa, from West Africa, from whatever country you are. And then you come home, you pretend again to be from the diaspora. Oh, I'm from America, it's dressed all these blings. And I'm from France, with all these Gucci bag and all these nice shoes to show them you are different from them. So then you will have the freedom to do a lot of things. That, my mind doesn't work that way. That if I go to Africa, I will behave exactly like a lot of people in, in my neighborhood don't even know I don't live there because maybe they've never seen me before, but they don't, it would never even occur in their mind that I live in America or live somewhere else. They're always, because the way I dress, the way I behave, blending 100%, you know, otherwise, why I, I went through grueling, grueling, awful things to try to get a visa, a, try to get a, a passport in Ivory Coast so I can travel with it. Do I need it? I don't need it. I can travel with my American or British passport anywhere in West Africa. But since I came to West Africa, I want to use my African passport too because I'm home. Why do I need to be, pretend I'm from the US or I'm from somewhere else? But I think they know something I didn't know because in Africa, anytime you pretend you're not from there, you get more respect. For me, I always, always got threatened over beating up because of filming. But those people who are walking around, throwing their weight around, trying to film, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm from America, man, I'm, I'm doing my video around, they get respect because the African, West Africa, they look at them as, oh, they are different. They are from the West. So literally, you are in the West, trying to be in, an African. You come to Africa, you're trying to be from the West. For, I, I don't, for me, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. If you are an African, you are an African, you come to Africa, you play the same African card. But at the same time, they want to show the difference. Maybe they, if they think they will look better if they say they are from US or they're from France or Europe, they get more respect. In fact, they do get a lot of respect. I don't, I always get certain of a beat, beat, beaten up. So I was, I was so mad I couldn't do, I couldn't film more, I couldn't do more videos the way I wanted to do. So left Senegal, went to Gambia, same story, you know, I did a lot of video here and there, here and there, but really in the bottom line is in West Africa is not an easy place to vlog. Some people will hate me to say that, but for me, clarity, you know, honesty is the, is the most best thing you can do in your life. If you are honest what you do and what you do, you have to be honest in everything and you have to be clear in what you say. 
vlogging in West Africa, I will repeat it again. I don't, I don't care whether you like it or not. It's not an easy thing. Maybe if you vlog with this video cell phone, of course, you're gonna get away. There's a lot of things I have to, I have to leave out because it's so embarrassing that I can't even say it. For me personally, you know, you see white people vlogging, but you cannot vlog. I see a lot of YouTube people in Africa, people take them in their houses, but I can't even vlog on the street, the government street, where they don't need a permit. People are harassing you. In Dakar, particularly in Plateau, every two blocks, because Senegal, the Plateau is small, it's very small. In Dakar Plateau, every two blocks, every two doors is a government building. Everybody knows the rule is you cannot film a uniform police. Anybody in a uniform, you cannot film a government building, which I know that. But anyway, you pan in your videos, a security guard guy over there will be shouting. You cannot film because there's a ministry there, there's a ministry there. You go to a public place, you cannot blow because there's also some people sitting around looking at you and saying, what are you doing? Why are you filming us? So I didn't want to get into any argument. So I keep turning off my camera here and there. Some of them were caught on the video, but some of them I didn't bother recording because they will be shouting again, why are you filming us? Why are we talking to you? You know, that's the same thing happening in Renaissance. And some Senegalese get, get mad. Oh, you're lying, you're lying. Trust me. I don't care whether you're from Senegal, you're not from Senegal. Try what I tried you're gonna have the same problem take your blings off don't because you guys want to show everybody oh, i'm from america it's all these big boats and all this uh, play simple and see if you can get away with anything unless you pre-plan you 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 go you pre-plan your, your 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 video people you know surrounded by yourself and you vlog or you do this by this but for me i could vlog in a smaller camera i got like a hidden cameras of course but if the problem with the hidden camera, if you are caught filming with the hidden camera in Africa, trust me, you deserve the ass whooping. You will usually deserve the ass whooping because you are hiding. I don't want to hide. I want to take my vlogging camera to show everybody I'm vlogging. If you want to participate, that's fine. If you don't want to participate, that's okay. You see, in the Middle East, in the, particularly in Saudi Arabia, look at how I was vlogging in the street. People come to you. People talk to you. You know, if I can, my, my point is, if I can vlog, in Saudi Arabia with no drama even in Saudi Arabia I crashed in somebody's house and I ended up having a tea in his house check that video literally went through the gate dropped my neck around went through start vlogging wanted to see the guy in the, in the steel room we ended I spent three four hours there we ended up becoming a friend can you do that in any place in West Africa hell no I vlog in Palestine, in Israel, everywhere with the same setting. If I can vlog over there, those are the most hardest places on the planet. What can I vlog? What, why can't I vlog back home in my own town, in my own country? For me personally, I consider West Africa, my, I don't care about the borders. All of the same to me. If I can vlog in the Middle East, no problem. If I can vlog in anywhere, Fiji is a paradise. I don't even have to compare Fiji to any of them. If I can vlog a foreign intention, no problem. Why can't I vlog in my West African countries without a guide? Do I need a guide? A white person will need a guide, but they don't need a guide. If you are from East Africa, I'm not talking about East Africa, guys. Don't send me any texts. Saying, oh, you lie in Africa, in East Africa. I'm talking about West Africa, specifically the places I went. Very, 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 very difficult to vlog. And people have some kind of negative view about youtube or mostly they they talk about negative on youtube but they're not on youtube whoever's telling me oh we're all on youtube they're lying mostly it's whatsapp facebook because youtube it costs a lot of money to, for data streaming even if you want to upload one youtube video in west africa you're gonna have a problem it's gonna take you 10 days don't tell me yeah i upload youtube video every day that's a lie unless you are working for a huge 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 company you have a possibility to upload because they have a fast streaming company. Foreign companies though in West Africa. But in your house, you're trying to, unless you pay so much money, you must be one of the upper class in West Africa to be able to upload 4K video. Even 1080 video, video in Africa, you're gonna have a problem. The antenna sucks, it's very slow. So it's not an abuse, it's not an insult, it's not anything, that's how it is. The internet is slow. So I try to upload one video one time. It, was, it took me 10 days. And I spent almost $150 for data to be able to upload. From that, I had to compress, recompress, recompress 10 times. I said, never again, I'm going to do that.
Yeah, that's been said uh, uh, since my West African video is, is up now. So I hope you enjoy and uh, okay, this is the post production. I was trying to tell you what went on behind the the video making. And but now and uh, and uh, I'm gonna uh, oh something came to my mind. Okay, see uh, through my videos around because my videos are always about marketplaces the African in the diaspora, the origin of African diaspora, that's most my base will go to those, like I did in India, also. and I, I get a lot of uh, uh, email from other African YouTubers, oh, your, your channel is dope, oh, what you're doing is uh, really beautiful, I, thank you brother, I thought they were encouraging me to do, to do my bit because I looked at the, the African YouTubers, most of them they're doing the beautiful things and they're going to the hotel resort, how Africa is beautiful. That's great actually. But I say, you know what, I'm gonna do something else. I focus on the African in the diaspora. I've been doing that since 30 years ago with the uh, still photography. There's no black people in the diaspora vast majority, I can't say all, but vast majority of the blacks in the diaspora have been to those villages, or some South America, literally, from Mexico all the way to Argentina, all this like a Peru, Paraguay, a, a Uruguay, Colombia, Venezuela, Panama, Nicaragua, a, a Belize, a, all those countries in Central America have been to every village that the black people exist with still photography, but then there's no YouTube. So when YouTube came in, came, I tried to replicate the same thing on YouTube, even in India. That's what, but then I get all these YouTubers when my channel started getting attention. Oh, they say, oh, that's a dope, dope, dope channel. All of a sudden now they're all doing what I'm doing. I mean, you tell him, you send him an email saying, oh, you're doing a dope thing, suddenly you're doing the exact same thing I'm doing. That's why we Africans sometimes we have to be, as a YouTuber, we have to be creative. Otherwise, we're all going to be doing the same thing, which will be a monotony, which will be repetitive things, you know. And, uh, you know, some people say, say oh, oh, visual poet, eh, 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 don't worry, there's enough fish in the pond for everybody. Well, I say that's not an African pond, because African pond always dry out fast. If you, for some of you who's, who are old enough, in the mid 80s all the way to mid 90s, remember the Kinte cloth and matte cloth when the blacks in America really make it a fashionable design for everybody to wear it? You know what happened to that business? Back then, and, and I used to go to New York every six months, some black Americans had a shop, like a very expensive shop, half million dollars businesses, opening matte cloth shops and African fabric shops to make it fashionable design and mask and everything. In downtown Manhattan and somewhere in up, upper side of Manhattan in Harlem, they got some beautiful shops. Then when the African community found out, oh, there's a many money to be made here, all of them drove, stopped driving their taxis or yellow car, whatever they were driving in New York, because that time there was no Uber. It was only Gypsy, who you remember Gypsy in New York, you know, the places they went, the, the yellow car didn't go, the Gypsy was going there. To drop people off, so they were dominated by the Caribbean and the black and the Africans. They all stop that and send message to the family back home. They brought containers from Mali, literally containers of mud cloth, saturated the New York marketplace. Literally, all those shops, expensive shops, who were paying taxes uh, for the government and and uh, beautiful, they all went out of business because. The African, what they're saying, they're still selling those mud cloth and kinti cloth on the street, right to two doors from the these expensive shops. In the shop, they were saying 120, 200, 300 dollars, 150 for one meter by square long. The dude is selling it on this on the floor for only uh, 20 bucks or 15 dollars if it's you know sometimes. So of course they're gonna run those people who are the shop out of business. You see because there, there were no creativity there people are bringing to be creative you open a shop you're bringing them uh, because you have family in west africa bringing containers saturated the market but the chinese got involved with the same business that's it now the mark cloths they've made a mass production they're printing it everywhere they're selling a whole kind of price i go back every year when i go back to new york I check, all those shops going out of business all the single one of them going out of business so that's what i'm saying there's no enough fish 
in an African pond forever because an African YouTuber is the same group moving around from one channel to another channel same group literally from here to here to here so if you jacked up my 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 topic my project to make it your own push me out of the driver's seat because they have or mostly they do have those African YouTubers they do have a bigger platform more than me you know my my channel if my channel was not suffering I, I didn't care but my channel is slowly slowly whatever I created my own niche suddenly they also oh this is more interesting they were doing like a, like a bars and restaurant and beaches now they they invade in what I'm doing I say you know what that's fine I have to be more creative again so if you're making your video and, and a topic and we all doing the same thing it become repetitive people are not learning you know anything new because whatever you're talking about somebody else is talking about in the same town in the same village as they try to steal my my project take a day oh blacks here in India black here. I started this program but now they're pushing me off the of the of the of the driver's seat they make it the one whatever they were doing they just jump off it and doing coming to do my project so that's why I see I say you know what there's no competition here some of the uh, African YouTubers are doing it very well you know they're not stealing anybody's project they're doing their own stuff they became really really good at it like uh, this guy is called uh, uh, Woody Maya for instance in Ghana he's doing some beautiful things literally one of the best literally he's not stealing anybody's stuff he's doing his stuff he found his niche he's sticking to it he's working perfectly for it and I'll say Tayo uh, uh, Tayo something in a uh, Tayo from Nigeria you know that guy is doing some beautiful things also but I really appreciate what they do you know because they found their niche they doing it and they try to be very creative within their confinement which is good but uh, you know uh, for for the rest of all those people who are not be kept being very creative trying to take people's stuff and make it their own and they put it all over the place maybe a, 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 for them that's how we need to get an audience that's okay but but you know it, it's better if you become if you are creative don't steal people's stuff you know so anyway that would, that's what i say some some people might like this you know you tell me the story of your project your creativity of somebody steal it and beneath your feet tell me your story leave it to the comment because we want to know you know it's not good for african community you know we have to be very creative like uh, for instance uh, like the instance the uh, example i give you in new york city i mean most of the african shops gone out of business because you know the african community kept bringing all this container i went to mali at that time to the mud cloth marketplace where they place those order this man told me it was in dabanani in bamako for people who are from mali know dabanani what the dabanani is he told me the command they you know the the they are backed up for two years they don't have even a a a, a hand they don't have people to catch up with the demand came from new york because all the uh, gypsy drivers dropped what they were doing they all went to mali and brought containers for mud cloth or run the person down ground today you can get the mud cloth it used to be sold 150 today you get 10 bucks for real you can get a 10 bucks especially when the chinese in a korean garden ball they went in money factory this all this print a, a, a fabric print from the factories so it's frustrating but that's the nature of of life or of business you know please leave me a comment to see you know tell me your story you know who if you have a similar example but now what i, I did is uh, i i'm trying to create another uh, series called black like me in northern africa honestly you guys are gonna love this channel this or uh, this or uh, this project i'm gonna do series i started in tunisia i'm gonna go to morocco and all those stuff so it's coming up so stay tuned and i thank all my uh, loyal supporter and subscriber you know and people who are leaving comment i appreciate it good or bad just bring it on send me the i, I see every single uh, a, a comment i'm not like other youtubers i check my count my, my comment because if you don't monitor your comment people put some nasty links on your comment for their own stuff i don't know what it is but that's why i have to monitor my comment 
but trust me i see everything and i mostly i respond to 80 percent of the comment too if especially if you have a good question i'm not like the other youtuber who try to ignore everybody no no no, no. my channel is about people it's about communication if you have a question send me if you're not happy send me so we we debate if I, if you but if you try to be funny i'll try to be funny too <laughs> that's how it goes you know that's you too you know it is open conversation please stay tuned if you are new in this channel this is visual poet i do video once a month hopefully you know youtube don't like that but that's why my channel is not doing well because they want you to put a video every two days my style does not allow me to do that I do once a month if I can because I want to make sure whatever I say, whatever I do is perfect. The content is much, is good because you don't care about that. You know, and anything I say, I have to double check, fax check because the troll will never let you get away with anything you say. That's why anything I say, I make sure I'm 90% or 95% right before I say anything. I fax check everything. That's why when people send a message, a, send a nasty email to me, I will take a YouTube channel, channel to me. I know how to respond because I know I wish, I'm sure what I say. Okay, anyway, that's been said. You know, I don't want to drag on for too long. Thank you very much for watching this channel and stay tuned. If you are new, please subscribe to this channel, spread it around. And, and the new vlog is coming out called Black Like Me in Northern Africa. Until then, stay tuned. Have a good one. Bye.